Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1120. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the real estate market because we're hearing all kinds of different things, but the numbers really bear out what is truly happening. And it's a little bit surprising because while you might be hearing that this market's crashing or that market's crashing, the reality is the market is still very, very hot in the fourth quarter. Now, there were fewer buyers that bought homes. Existing home sales dropped 5.9% from September to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 4.43 million in October, according to Redfin, and that means they were down 28.4% year over year. That's the largest ever year over year drop in existing home sales since 2007. And generally, that's because of higher mortgages and higher mortgage rates and the difficulty of people getting squeezed out qualifying for a mortgage in October. Also, the number of first-time home buyers stood aside. And in October, they were just 28% of all purchases, which is close to an all-time low. Again, some were priced out due to higher mortgage rates or not having enough of a down payment because of affordability issues but there's still a shortage of houses and that continues to be the most challenging issue for the housing industry. At the end of October, there were 1.22 million household units available, which is a 0.8% decrease from September and a year earlier. Currently on the market, unsold inventory has a 3.3 month supply up from 3.1 months in September and 2.4 months in October of 2021. And that's really hitting harder in expensive areas of the country and where there were significant home price gains in recent years. In October, the median price of an existing home across all different housing types was $379,100, which is an increase of 6.6% over October of 2021. And during October, properties spent an average of 21 days on the market, up from an average of 18 days in October of 21 and 19 days in September. But interestingly, around two thirds of all the properties that sold last month were available for less than a month. So they're still selling very, very quickly if priced appropriately. Even though mortgage rates have dropped a little bit, affordability is still the big issue. And home values, while we've seen a little bit of softness, we're just not seeing the big price declines that people have been expecting. Markets have held strong and steady. And with rates getting a little bit softer, that should help buyers a little bit. The buyers that are waiting on the sidelines are really waiting for two things. They're waiting for either mortgage rates to go down or home prices to go down. According to Kieran Clancy, senior U.S. economist at Pantheon Macroeconomics, Home prices have just lately begun to trend downward on a monthly basis due to a lack of supply, but inventory is already creeping higher as many previously reluctant sellers start to worry that their home will fetch a much lower price if they continue to wait to sell. But in October, the number of homes sold in the U.S. fell for the ninth consecutive month as purchasers backed away from the market because of rising mortgage rates and higher prices. And that reflected decreases in every region of the U.S., both month over month and year over year. That was the longest stretch of dropping sales ever recorded, dating back to 1999, and it continues a trend that started slowing in February. That trickle of supply could quickly become a flood, though, increasing in speed, if not the ultimate depth of the decline in home prices, Clancy said. We think prices need to drop by about 20% from their spring peaks in order to reach a sustainable level. I think part of that, too, is people are waiting to see what the Federal Reserve is going to do and how much more they're going to hike interest rates. They do have a meeting coming up in December, and 
the rumor is that they will hike by 50 basis points or half a percent at that time. And that's good because originally they had been moving up at three quarters of a percent. And so this is a change in that pattern. Whether the Fed will take some time and review what rates do or review the inflation rate from here remains to be seen. But it's good news that they're said to be raising a little bit less than they have been. That's a move in the right direction. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.